Chapter 11 Ah! Uh, why did you drop the towel? Catherine was completely stupefied, as it was the first time she encountered this kind of situation. She reached out to cover her eyes, and that was when she realised the white towel was in her hand. Did she... did she accidentally pull the towel off him earlier? You tell me why. Sean's indifferent voice swept past her cheeks like cold ice. I've never seen a woman as shameless as you. She felt like crying, but no tears came out. I didn't plan to do so. I accidentally tripped on the mat. I've been walking on this mat every single day, but I've not tripped before. Not once. You can't convince me with this ridiculous excuse. The man did not believe her at all. She blinked blankly. The situation was beyond mending now, so she replied innocently. Perhaps after having a glimpse of your godlike and impeccably perfect body, my mind went blank and I lost my ability to focus. The man scoffed out of anger. He had encountered numerous women in his life, but not one was this brazen. So you're turning the blame onto me now? No, not at all. It's my fault, really, for I've never seen much of life. Will you stop staring? Get out. Sean could not hear more of that. He felt the blood boiling in his veins and tried really hard to resist kicking her in the face. Yes, of course. I'll leave right away. Catherine hurriedly rose to her feet and headed for the door. Stand right there. A frustrated voice shouted behind her. The man was fuming with rage and said between gritted teeth, Give me my towel. She lowered her eyes to the towel she was clutching. She was so embarrassed that she wished there was a hole she could just crawl into. <sighs> Here. She put on a bold face and shoved the towel into his hands. He was speechless when he realised the direction she was looking in. What an audacious woman. Slam! Catherine slammed the door shut behind her, patting her chest while puffing. She seemed to notice the tips of the man's ears turning bright red before she left the room. Was he embarrassed? It was quite adorable, to be honest. However, after this incident, she dared not linger in the living room anymore and returned to her bedroom right away. Nonetheless, her mind did not seem capable of recovering from the surprise. She had no idea how much time had passed when someone suddenly knocked on the door. The woman jumped up in fright. A couple of seconds later, she replied timidly. Can we talk about this tomorrow? I'm sleepy. Do you keep your lights on when you sleep? Sean's deep voice entered through the gap beneath the door. Don't make me get the key. She scratched her head in frustration before opening the door. The man who was standing by the door was dressed in his grey pyjamas. The refreshing scent of his aftershave smelled pleasant. The buttons of his shirt were done all the way to the top, covering his Adam's apple. It was only autumn now, so it was not even that chilly. What are you looking at? Sean became more furious upon sensing her gaze. This woman sure had the cheek. Speechless, Catherine did not know what his piercing stare meant. Nothing. You know better than anyone else. He lowered his head to look at the woman. From this angle, her neck appeared slim and elegant. Perhaps it was the light, or another reason, but her face seemed to be illuminated with a charming sunset glow. His gaze moved down to the neckline of her cotton pyjamas. Right away, his eyes narrowed as he became more determined about his decision. Well, what are you looking at? She posed the same question. The man's piercing stare was so intimidating that she, who was mentally prepared to seduce him, was having cold feet. She cast her gaze downward and immediately used her hands to cover her chest instinctively. He scoffed. I'm trying to see how you seduce me. She was at a loss for words. Admittedly, she did have that thought before, but not now. I wasn't. The woman pouted. Her makeup free face looked naturally clean and fresh. Sean withdrew his gaze, and indifference instantly returned to the features on his handsome face. 
I can give you the money to rent a place somewhere else. It's not appropriate for us to live in the same home. He was chasing her out of the house. Catherine became nervous upon hearing that. How is it inappropriate? We're lawfully wedded. A sarcastic smile spread across his face. I think you know the real reason why we got married. Upon hearing that, she attempted to put on her best seductive smile while trying to look shy at the same time. Isn't it because I fell for you at first sight? Since that moment, my young heart has been deeply attached to you. Speechless. He must have been bewitched that night. Out of the blue, she said. I get it now. You must still be mad about the incident earlier. I know you feel as if you've been taken advantage of, and it's normal to think that way. She bit her pink lip, looking as if she was trying to make up her mind. Well, what about I show you what I have as well? Then she reached out to undo the top button of her pajamas. He subconsciously stopped breathing for a split second before he turned around and slammed the door shut, not forgetting to comment on her outrageously brazen behaviour. She heaved a sigh of relief as she looked at her collarbones. She found it quite funny that he had left before she could show anything. Despite his bad temper, he was still a decent gentleman. It was quite rare to meet a man like this nowadays. Midnight. Catherine was woken up at the noise of the cat meowing incessantly. She got out of bed and turned the lights on. Fudge was laying under the table, throwing up weakly. Fudge! Startled, she reached out to get the cat, but Sean's indifferent voice rang behind her. Get out of the way. Her hands froze midair. He stepped forward to pick the cat up. His chiseled jawline appeared indifferent and distant under the soft illumination of the lights. Nonetheless, beneath the messy black hair, somewhere deep within his pair of dark brown eyes, was sparkling with an enchanting gentleness. What happened to her? Catherine felt lost and helpless to see the adorable cat suffering. What do you think? Sean glared at her with rage in his eyes. She's a cat, but you've been feeding her trash. Do you seriously think a stomach can handle it? She felt utterly remorseful. She had seen stray cats before that ate almost anything they could find on the streets. This was why she thought cats had a strong digestive system. I'm sorry. I won't let you off the hook if something bad happens to Fudge. He glared at her long and hard before rising to his feet and grabbing the car keys. He then hurried out of the house with Fudge in his arms. She quickly followed him to the elevator. I know a good veterinarian. Let me show you the way, she said anxiously. He pursed his lips coldly without acknowledging her. The elevator stopped at the parking lot and he stepped out of it in big strides. When they got to the car, she had just opened the door to the passenger seat when a strong arm pulled her away forcefully from the back. Catherine, who was wearing slippers, staggered backward. Being tipped off her balance, she fell backward and landed on the ground. He stood in front of the car. She was frightened by the intense despise that exuded from his dark pupils. Get out of here immediately. I don't wish to see you here by the time I come home, and I won't be polite next time. Then, Sean carried Fudge into the car. The white Lexus sped off into the distance in no time. Left alone in the dark parking lot, Catherine's eyes welled up with tears as she looked at the car driving off. The grievances that she had been holding back the entire day finally poured down her face like a broken dam. Everyone had been giving her the cold shoulder today, keeping her at a distance. She did not feel as if she belonged to the Jones household any more. Fudge was the only one left that was nice to her. However, she could not even remain at this place any longer. Her lips twitched into a sarcastic smile. Suddenly, the image of Fudge throwing up earlier popped into her mind, and she felt deeply sorry. Catherine knew Sean was not interested in her, yet she persisted in pestering him anyway in order to achieve her own goal. She completely disregarded her own dignity. 
Was this really worth it? She even put fudge through this pain. Perhaps it was time for her to leave. Chapter 12 Catherine got up to her feet. She returned to the house to pack up her belongings and left. At 2 a.m., she did not want to disrupt her friend's sleep, so she drove to the nearest five-star hotel right away. In the lobby, she retrieved her credit card and handed it to the receptionist. It was returned into her hands a few seconds later. I'm sorry to inform you that this card can't be used. Startled, she received it and gave the person another card. However, she failed to make the payment even after several tries with her other cards. It finally dawned upon her that the Joneses had suspended all of her credit cards. Although she had earned a few million dollars in the past couple of years from working on several projects, she had handed over the money to Sally without keeping any for herself. She normally used the credit cards given to her by Jeffrey for her daily expenses, but those cards were all currently suspended. All she had left was a pay card that only had a little over $10,000. The receptionist got impatient. If you can't afford to stay in our hotel, there's a motel about 300 yards away after taking a left turn by the main entrance. She was offended. Is this how you treat your customers? I'm just being honest. You shouldn't come to a five-star hotel if you can't afford it. Catherine was exasperated by now. She did not expect herself, a young lady from the affluent Jones household, to one day be subjected to such humiliation. I can very well afford it. I... <sighs> she retrieved her pay card, but started to hesitate. The cheapest room in this hotel was at least $2,000 a night. Given the current situation, she really could not tell when she could return to the Jones household again. She was now jobless and homeless. How could she survive in the future if she spent everything she had left? All right, stop pretending. Leave. This is not somewhere you belong, the receptionist said rudely. Catherine swallowed her pride and left the hotel with her suitcase dragging behind her. Many of the hotels did not have spare rooms at this hour of the night. She wandered around for a bit before checking into a budget hotel that charged around $100 per night. Without her knowledge, someone took a picture of her entering the cheap hotel and sent it to their high school group chat. Sean, who had arrived at the veterinary hospital, was personally greeted by the head veterinary surgeon. He was waiting by the door with his lips tightly pursed. The man was filled with regret as he pondered over his decision to marry a woman he knew nothing of. Fifteen minutes later, the door of the surgical room opened. Out came Dr. Lewis. Sean stepped forward immediately, his face all tensed up. How's the cat doing? Dr. Lewis readjusted his glasses before revealing a smile. Your cat is two weeks pregnant. He was at a loss for words. Congratulations, Dr. Lewis smiled. For the new addition to your household. Sean inhaled sharply as he suppressed his strong desire to lash out. Two weeks! That was before they moved to Melbourne. Some random male cat must have taken advantage of Fudge while they were still living in Canberra. He would undoubtedly punish the perpetrator if he managed to locate it. Hmm. You don't look too pleased about the news. Should we get rid of them? Dr. Lewis, who had encountered numerous pet parents, had developed a strong sixth sense. If that's the case, we can perform a spaying operation to remove the kittens, but it's rather cruel. I did the bee scan on the cat earlier, and uh, she's carrying three kittens. It's good luck. Before he could finish his sentence, Dr. Lewis shuddered as he felt a deadly stare piercing through him. Immediately, he stopped speaking. Sean questioned in a deep voice. Does a pregnant cat throw up like a human mother does? Well, it depends on each cat's condition, the doctor explained with a smile. Some people who don't know better will think the cat is having digestive problems. It was exactly what Sean thought. He even shifted the blame to Catherine. He seemed to recall pushing her to the ground before he left. In other words, he had wronged her. 
Frustrated, he massaged the area between his eyebrows. He wondered how that woman was doing right now.